knowing Jim Chapin has been a, a real blessing in my life because he really, first of all, he, was, he had a very high IQ. And by having a very high IQ, he was just a brilliant mind. And of course, that brilliant mind was involved in the drumming community. So it really lifted and shifted the drumming level community to such a high point, especially with his books that he wrote. But interesting enough is that he told me the story that in about 19, I guess it was 1938, he had heard Gene Krupa at the Metropole. The Metropole was a very, very well-known, famous club in New York City that had a stage above the bar. It had a very, very high stage. So when you came in, you looked up at the band. And Jim had gone there with a date at that time in 1938 to hear some great jazz music by the great Gene Krupa. He walks in, not playing music at all in his life ever before. He walks in. Here's Gene play a couple of sets and is blown away by Gene's playing. And he realizes that this is what he wants to do. It was the inspiration from Gene Krupa at that event that he said, I want to play the drums. At the time, Jim was young. He was probably 18 years old. And hearing Gene, Gene Krupa, from what I understand, although I had never met Gene, I had spoken to Gene on the phone one day during a Joe Morello lesson. And he just sounded like a very, very kind man and a kind spirit. But with Jim, Jim just realized that that was what he wanted to do. It just reached him at such a high point by hearing Jim, by Jim seeing Gene perform. So they play a couple sets. Gene comes off the stage and he runs up to Gene Krupa and says, Mr. Krupa, you are the best that's out there that was so inspiring. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And I want you to be my teacher. Now imagine the, you know, just the, courage it takes to walk up to this great drummer and say, you're the best, so I want you to be my teacher. Well, Gene was very honored and humbled by that. And he said to, to Jim, he said, boy, that's very, very nice. I'm not teaching now. I'm traveling too much. I'm doing movies. And Gene was doing so much at that time in his life. He said, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the name of my teacher who lives in Queens, Long Island. His name is Sanford Augustus Moeller. So he writes down his number, says, give him a call, tell him Gene sent you and go have some fun and learn what I've learned about these different techniques. Jim takes the number, contacts Moeller, and from 1938 to about 1940, for a little over two years, Jim studied with Moeller and just learned and adapted this movement and this technique with Jim's hands, also learning from Moeller this free stroke rebound and this whipping motion. Jim's hands just soared from Jim practicing many, many hours each day and getting this technique down. He goes on and Jim eventually develops a, a wonderful career. 1948, Jim writes his book, Advanced Techniques for the Modern Drummer, puts his book together, develops some notoriety, plays with several different bands, is doing fantastic, doing some teaching, having a fantastic career, still being inspired by Gene. And then it was about, in the, about the mid 1950s, Gene Krupa decides he wants to go back and learn some more. And I guess this is the real, inspiration of someone like Krupa, who was just a constant learner. This is what Jim had told me. He just always wanted to constantly learn. So Krupa contacts Sanford Moeller and says, Mr. Moeller, I want to get back and I want to learn and I want to understand the process of drumming again and I want to come back to you to continue my studies. This is now about, you know, about probably about five years before Moeller had passed away. He contacts Moeller and says, I'm ready to take lessons again. And Sanford says to Gene, I'm not teaching anymore. I'm too old. I want you to study with my best student, which is Jim Chapin. So now Gene is going to call Jim up to get lessons. So imagine the intensity. So I said to Jim, I said, Jim, well, what happened? He said, I got a call from this guy that said he was Gene Krupa and wanted lessons. I said, so what happened? He said, I hung up on him. I said, well, he says, yeah. He says, Gene Krupa calling me for lessons. The phone rings again, Jim told me. He said, came back on and it was Krupa saying, Jim Chapin, don't hang up on me. I got your number from Sanford Moeller. I want some lessons on the technique. Well, they went back and they absolutely studied together, working on these techniques. Gene was just such a fantastic student to continue learning. And there's a picture that I have in my studio that is reminiscent of Gene taking lessons with Jim at that time. And it was just really amazing that the fact that Gene had this desire to want to keep on learning. And Jim had this incredible story of going back and showing Gene how he can enhance his playing even more by some of the adaptions of what Jim did 
with Moeller's movement and study of how this motion would assist him in drumming, taking it to entirely new lights. So this is the magic of Chapin and the magic of just one simple story of Jim Chapin.